Howdy, AP Precal. It is Miss Kosh. Today, I want to see how far I can get in Mr. Passwater's notes. Um, this is one one, and I have one two and one three in the stack, and I'll break it into different videos, and then we'll see. Um, we'll see how long I have before I have to teach my next class. So, jumping in, um, it says a function. Okay, to be honest with you, I may have looked at this, but it's been a little while, so I'm kind of walking in cold to these. Um, so hopefully I don't make mistakes, but you know, we're human, right? Okay, a function is a mathematical relation that maps a set of input values to a set of output values such that each input value is mapped to exactly one okay, output value. Um, okay, so then he talks about how the vertical line test is typically used. Um, I mentioned in my notes, and he says this too, um, that that's not sufficient, partly because when we get to polar functions, we'll find functions that would fail a vertical line test but still be a function. Um, but we want to use the statement, each input has exactly one output, instead of saying, well, it passed the vertical line test. Okay, um, That's helpful for us, to, to the, but then that's not going to be a sufficient answer on the AP exam. Okay, the set of input values of a function is called the domain represented by the x variable. Um, this is the independent. I spelled that wrong one time and they called me uh, Miss Independent <laughs> for a long time. I hate spelling. Okay, uh, this <laughs> true story. Um, the set of output values of a function is called the range and represented by the y variable and these are the dependent values. Okay, um, and it says a function f is positive when the graph lies above the x-axis. Okay, so all the outputs are greater than zero. So we have the function, if you think about it, the f is representing the y values. So f is going to be positive when all the y values are positive, or when those y values are positive. Um, a function is negative if, um, if it lies, lies below the x-axis, um, anything that's less than that. Okay, let's see. Um, he goes into describing how we have um, different ways of representing the same sort of... Um, or different ways of representing math. Sometimes we have, um, like you can you can write the equation for the graph sometimes, but sometimes we'll give you a graph without the equation and coming up with the equation be, would be tricky. Um, and the table definitely limits the number of values that you have. So anyway, um, sometimes they're interchangeable, sometimes they're not, but there's four ways to represent math. Yay. Okay. Oh, these you guys are tricky. They always mess with me. Let's see how we do. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're taking a vase and we're adding water to it. Um, and we're describing this is going to be the time and then the the height of the water. Well, this one right here indicates that it's... So we're pouring water in at a constant rate, okay? But because the shape of the vase is, is different or like because it's not... If it were just a cylinder then as you pour water in, it rises at a, at, a, at a constant rate, okay? And so something like this matches something like that one right there because we're just pouring, the, this amount that we pour in is what is constant. So it's not like you turn on the faucet and it's perfectly consistent. It gives you exactly the same volume going in the whole time. But, and if it's, if it's um, a nice little cylinder here, the height would be proportional to that. I mean, it would just, and it would just increase as you fill it up. But you'll notice this one is not that scenario. So when you start pouring water into this one, it's gonna, um, the, the height, right? Okay, well, let's, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. About here, we go from like the, the height, it's gonna be kind of slowly, it's slowly increasing because this level right here is not it like it can fill up to this height a little faster than it can fill up to that height because um, like if you were taking slices of this this slice would be bigger than that slice so filling up this okay uh, this level right here would take longer than filling up that level okay so what's happening here is that the rate it's increased the rate that the height changes is uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me make. I'm telling you, these are tricky for me. Um, at this point, the height is increasing at a decreasing rate um, up to here because each level is a little bit bigger than before, so it's going to take it a longer time. So the rate that it's increasing is, um, man, you guys, these are tricky for me. But then it starts going faster, so it's going to be up to this point. Well, no, I mean it's still kind of decreasing beyond that, but it's um, the height is going to is going to increase at a faster rate um so it's increasing at an increasing rate right here 
Um, so it's going to be concave down where the rate is decreasing, um, and then it's going to be concave up, but it doesn't really do like this little bubble-like thing right here. So I think this is the best answer, but I'm going to have to go check his answer key because I'm telling you these are tricky. Um, but I, when I was doing the practice I wrote, I would draw a line and talk about, okay, what's happening here? The height will be it, the height is increasing the whole time, you'll notice, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate, and then it's increasing at an increasing rate because, um, like, this amount from here to here, like, when you fill this much water, it's going to be faster than filling, like, this much water. Okay, hopefully, like, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. We'll keep practicing. Okay, so now he says we have um, a graph is increasing if... When A is less than B, then the F of A is less than F of B. So think about it. Okay, so A, say A, let's let A equal 1 for just a second. Here's A equals 1. Here's that value. It equals 1. Let's let B equal 4. I'm just totally making up different numbers. Here's B equals 4. Notice this B equals 4 is equal to 3 or something like that. 3 is bigger than 1. So the Y values, if it's increasing, as the X is increasing, Y is also increasing. So as X gets bigger, what is Y doing? Y gets bigger. That means your graph is increasing. It's the opposite for decreasing. If A is less than B, um, okay, this part's the same, <laughs> then F of A is greater than F of B. So as A is getting, uh, as your X value gets bigger, your Y value gets smaller. Um, concave up means that the rate of change is increasing. If you go back and look at my notes on this, the beginning, the warm-up part of my notes shows you um, why this is true. So he does a real, um, I, he, I <laughs> do a good job of teaching that on my worksheet and in the other notes. Um, so it's like three videos ago or something like four videos ago. Okay. Um, if it's concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. So we're going to talk about on this side, the graph is increasing, but this will be increasing at an increasing rate. Over here, our graph is decreasing, and this is going to be decreasing, but at it, the whole, the whole, uh, the rate of change on this whole interval is increasing, so this is decreasing at an increasing rate. Okay, um, let's see, before we move ahead, it's important to clarify a few things. Um, we will always use the input at variable x when writing intervals. Oh yeah, so when we're writing an interval as to like where is it increasing or decreasing, we don't care about the y values, we just care about x. Okay. Um, okay, so on this one, let's see, uh, the shows us a piecewise function over the interval from 0 to 9. Where is the graph increasing? It's increasing, well, it's increasing from here to here, which is um, from 0 to 3. Now, we, every year, we have a big debate in our, in our teacher's lounge over the math, uh, those of us that eat lunch together, we have a, a group of math teachers, we're kind of nerds, um, we have a blast. Um, but we argue, I prefer to use soft brackets, but hard brackets are also acceptable. Um, so work out, I don't, I can't imagine a scenario where they would give you both and, and make it multiple choice and you have to pick one, okay? Um, so we, we debate every year. Uh, I don't really wanna debate this right now, but it's also increasing. So it's increasing, decreasing, and it's increasing again. So I would say union and then seven to nine if you're using soft brackets. Um, I think they would also accept this. I should go look at his answer key and see what he says. Okay, um, the next thing we're going to talk about the rate of change, and the rate of change is the slope. Um, so let's see, uh, we must read very carefully in this course. Stating that f is increasing is very different than stating the rate of change of f is increasing. Okay, so we're going to be careful with f is increasing means the graph is increasing. The rate of change of f is increasing means that we're concave up. Okay, and if you remember, we just saw a concave up where part of it was decreasing. Okie dokie. We have F is positive because the output values are all positive, i.e. the graph. Okay, so everything here, this the F is positive. F is decreasing because the values are getting smaller as we go this way. Um, and then the rate of change is increasing because the graph is concave up. So what oh. you can think of, um, if we had... A secant line or a tangent line to the curve right here that is a very steep but very it's a very negative slope but when we get here it's still a negative slope but it is a less negative slope so if you go from owing me two hundred dollars to now you only owe me fifty dollars you still owe me money you're still negative but you're better off right you're better I mean I I want your money no I'm just kidding but um um but instead of owing me $200, that's, um, that is, you have, your amount of money has increased, but you still owe me money if you only owe me 50 now, 
anyway, um, or think of it with a number line. If we're looking at, on our number line, if we're looking at negative 200, where, and you now have a slope of negative 50, or whatever, you have gone in the positive direction. Your, your amount has increased, even though um, it's still negative. Okay, this one, all of, the, all of the curve is underneath the x-axis, so g is negative. It's, it, all those values are growing, so it's increasing, and it's concave. This is down, we could say concave up like a cup and down like a frown. Okay, the rate of change is decreasing because the graph is concave down. So we can see that we're really steep here. Um, so this is a, a, a big positive number. We are less steep here, so it's, a, it's still positive, um, but it's a much smaller value. Um, okay, so he talks, we decided to save this till we get to trig. Um, I mean, I guess there's no reason to, but this is exactly, exactly, exactly what shows up on um, FRQ3. Um, okay, so they give us this graph, they plot these points. Um, when it comes to FRQ3, they're, you're going to have to tell the values of those points. Um, on the interval, what was T1? They said T1 was F, so we went from F to G is our T2, so we're on this interval. Notice our graph is decreasing and we're concave down, so we would say that this graph is decreasing at a decreasing rate. Okay, what is true about H? H is, okay, so our H values are zero, and for our Y values, this ends up being our um, X axis, because here we're at Z, we have Y values of zero. Um, and so we are, po our H is positive, right? Because it's the graph of H, yes. And increasing, no, we are not increasing, we are decreasing. So we're positive and decreasing. Okay, the next one, my kids, I'm not gonna teach this yet. I'm just gonna save it till later because I think we did fine saving it till later last year. On this graph, all of my Y values are negative. Did they ask us that? So we can get rid of our, oh, you know what? I forgot this. Describe how the rate of change is changing. Since it's concave down, the rate of change, um, you would call it the average rate of change, is decreasing. I'm too lazy to write out the word, but there you go. Um, okay, now this one, where are we? We're going from K to P. So K to P, we are increasing and we're concave down. So we're um, in the, the whole graph, all of my Y values were negative. So we're negative, but we're increasing. Um, describe the rate of change. Since we're concave down, it's decreasing. So average rate of change is decreasing. Oh, how are we doing time-wise? Let's see. Is this video too long? Uh, yeah, let's come back for the next video to do and we'll do multiple choice then. All right, I'll see you there. Uh, like, subscribe, comment to tell me um, all the good things. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Goodbye. See you later.